Hello and welcome back to the Hasbashan YouTube channel, it is Harry here and today it is time to continue on my mini-series where I look at a specific league and each of their clubs and rank them based on their longest serving manager from lowest to highest and today's video sees the turn of Ligue 1. Thus far I've done the Premier League, the Liga and Serie A so if you want to check them out I've made a ranking playlist with all the videos I will do where I rank certain things, or have done where I rank certain things. So if that playlist link is in the description for you to check out if you want to watch it. And whilst you're here, of course, hit the like and hit the subscribe button if you have not done so already. And without any further ado, here is every single league and club ranked by virtue of their longest serving manager from the shortest amount of time to the longest amount of time that they spent in the club. 20th, Paris Saint-Germain with Georges Perroche. The hegemonic force in French football for much of the last 10 years, PSG had a season to forget last time out as they finished second behind Lille in Ligue 1 and were knocked out of the Champions League semi-finals by eventual runners-up Manchester City. Whilst it may seem as though their success came out of nowhere as a result of the purchase of the club by the state of Qatar, they had won quite a few trophies before the takeover in 2011, including eight Coupe de France titles, two of which were won under their longest serving manager, Georges Perroche. He joined in 1979 and left at the end of the 1982-83 season after guiding PSG to third place in the league as well as their second Coupe de France title in succession, making him the sixth most successful manager in PSG's history and third most out of all of those who managed the club prior to the Qatari investment, but a spell of just under four years in Paris is the shortest out of anyone in this video. 19th, Clermont Foot 63 with Pascal Gastien. For some reason, Transfer Marks, one of the sites I use for research for these types of videos, lists Olivier Chavanon as having been manager of Clermont for a longer period of time than anyone else, but it turns out that he played for, and not managed, the club between 1997 and 2001. So how on earth Transfer Marks put him down as a manager, I'm not quite sure. In any case, Pascal Gastien will overtake Chavanon before too long, since he will celebrate his fourth anniversary in charge of the club this coming September, which will be made extra special for him given that he was the man who led Clermont into Ligue 1 for the first time in their history last season. In one of the most fluctuating leagues year on year, as well as one of the lowest scoring leagues in the entirety of Europe, Clermont built on a defensive foundation, conceding just 25 goals all season to come in second, two points ahead of Toulouse, and Gastien's name will forever be etched into the history of Clermont Foot. But he still comes 19th in this list. 18th, Marseille with Henri Roussela and Victor Gibson. Unbelievably, in our relegation zone of managerial spells, we have two of the three most successful teams in French football history, with Marseille having won nine officially given to them league titles and the Champions League, the only French team to do so, but the chaotic club have gone through managers like nobody's business throughout their history, which reflects in only Rosler and Victor Gibson's separate four-year stints being the longest that they've ever had. Victor Gibson's spell was a trophy-laden one, as he won two Coupe de France titles as well as a league championship in the season he left back in 1929, but Rosler went trophyless in his four years from 1950 until 1954, even coming close to relegating the club for the first time in their history back in 1952. And how on earth he kept his job after that is beyond me. Joint 16th, OGC Nice with Jean Serafine. During a managerial career that took him to countries such as Saudi Arabia, Tunisia and China, where he managed Wuhan before it became the most infamous place in the entire world, Jean Serafine took over Nice just after they had been relegated to Division 2 for the first time in 12 years, back in 1982. He finished in 3rd, then 2nd and then 1st to finally achieve promotion back to Division 1, the old name for Liga, which is a fantastic sequence of progression and steady improvements, and he led the club for two seasons back in the top flights, finishing mid-table in both of them. Joint 16th, Arte Strasbourg with Thierry Loré. Although he is technically speaking still in charge at the time of this recording, Thierry Loré will depart the club when his contract expires on the 30th of June to be replaced by former Rennes manager Julien Stefan. A club who were in the amateur 5th tier as recently as 2012, Strasbourg rose back up through the French league system at a rapid rate, reaching Ligue 1 in the 2016-17 season, at the start of which Thierry Loré became the manager. They have remained there ever since, finishing in and around the mid to low table positions, and even winning the now defunct Coupe de la Ligue in 2019, but the club took the decision to not renew Loré's contract this summer, thus meaning that his 5 year spell in Alsace will have ended just after this video goes up. 15th. Montpellier with René Dédieu. René Dédieu's spell in charge of Montpellier came when the club were called Sports Olympique Montpellier Rennes between 1927 and 1933, back in the days when they were a really successful side in the French game. 
They lifted the Coupe de France in 1929 and were invited to take part in the first ever season of French professional football in 1932. And as those of you who have seen my video taking a look at where every club who played in that seminal campaign for French football will already know, they came in fourth. Didier left after that season, and within two years, the club were relegated, dissolved owing to severe financial troubles, and then immediately reformed again. 14th, AS Monaco with Arsene Wenger. As far as I can tell, Arsene Wenger is the only man to feature in two separate videos of this ilk, as he is the longest serving manager of not only Arsenal, but also Monaco. Wenger's time in Monaco was, to all intents and purposes, very successful, albeit without too many trophies to show for his efforts, as he only won one league title in his very first season in 1988 and won Coupe de France, with that coming in 1991, but they only finished below third once in Wenger's seven full seasons there, reached three European semi-finals and one final in the form of the European Cup Winners' Cup final in 1992. After a turbulent start to the 1994-95 season, Wenger was sacked, a decision which the Monaco board had wanted to make for a while after a breakdown in relations between the two parties, and he jetted off to Japan to join Nagoya Grampus 8 before moving to North London and revolutionising the English game forever. 13th, Stade René with Jean Pouf. Despite spending 64 seasons in France's top flight, Rennes have never won it, being the club who have spent the most amount of time in Ligue 1 but never lifted the trophy, and they've only won three major trophies in their entire history, all being Coupe de France's. Two of them were lifted under Jean Prof, who won it in his first season in 1965 and his last in 1971, and his seven year time frame as Rennes' manager is unmatched by anyone else in the club's 120 year history. Bizarrely, between 1967 and 1971, Rennes alternated between finishing in 11th and 14th every season, only breaking the habit in 1971-72, the season after Prof's departure, when they came in 11th instead of 14th. So much for consistency. 12th, Lyon with Aimé Mignon. I never quite understood the name Aimé, considering it literally means liked when translated into English, and I get the idea that your parents must love you and all that jazz, but I haven't heard of an English child called Light personally, and if there is one, then please let me know. Moving on from my ramblings though, Aimé Mignol became the Lyon manager in 1968, where he had spent 11 years and made no fewer than 424 appearances as a player, and he helped Lyon establish themselves as a force in the French game, lifting two Coupe de France titles, as well as achieving the first top three finish in their history in 1974, repeating the trick the following campaign. However, the very next season saw them slide into relegation troubles, and Mignol left in February 1976 to be replaced by another Amy, this time Jacquet, who would later go on to win the World Cup with France in 1998, and they survived that season. 11th, AS3 with Alain Perrin. Trois are currently majority owned by the City Football Group, who of course own Manchester City, and they are the youngest club in Ligue 1, having only been formed in 1986. Despite that, they still come in at 11th when it comes to their longest serving coach of all time, as Alain Perrin, who would later go on to manage, and fail, at Portsmouth, managed Trois for 9 years from 1993 until 2002 and became a living legend in Champagne country. He took them all the way from the 4th tier of French football to Ligue 1 within 6 years of his arrival, but he wasn't done there, qualifying the club for the Intertoto Cup for 2 seasons running, even winning it in 2001-2002 by defeating Newcastle on away goals, before Perrin was finally lured away to manage Marseille in 2002 and deprived of their guiding light, Trois finished last in the season after he left. 10th, Asse Lens with Arnold Sovinsky. A goalkeeper during his playing days, Arnold Slavinsky was only ever contracted to one club as either a player or a manager, and that club, in case you hadn't figured it out by now for some reason, is Arsene Lens, for whom he made 126 appearances across 14 seasons and then managed on three separate occasions. The first stint is the one that earns him a spot in 10th amongst Ligue 1's longest serving managers club by club, as he joined in 1969 with the club stuck in the third tier and having just lost their professional license, but he returned them to the Vision 2 immediately and by the end of his tenure they were playing in European football after finishing in second in Ligue 1 in 1976-77. He came back in 1979 and stayed for two years before returning once more on a salvage mission in 1988 to keep the club afloat in Division 1, which he was successful in doing. Joint 8th, SCO Angers with Stéphane Moulin. 
Stefan Moulin became the Angers manager in 2011, having managed the B team for six years, and in 2015, after four seasons of trying, the club finally managed to get out of Ligue 2 and into Ligue 1 for the first time since 1994, despite scoring just 47 goals all season. Moulin made them a steady if unspectacular team upon promotion, finishing between 9th and 14th in each of his six seasons there, but in March of this year, he gave a statement saying that he would resign from the club on his own accord at the end of the season, stating that he thought anything longer than 10 years in charge may have been too much for him, so the official tally will read 3,653 days by the time he leaves the club, even though we haven't reached that figure just yet. Joint 8th, Girondin de Bordeaux with André Gérard To say that André Gérard's decade-long tenure at the helm of Girondin de Bordeaux was hectic would be an understatement. He took charge in 1947, guiding the club to promotion from Division 2 in 1949 and seeing his charges score 107 goals along the way, but the following campaign, they would carry that momentum forward in spectacular style as they lifted the Division 1 title for the first time in their history. They were going to reach two Coupe de France finals in 1952 and 1955, losing both of them to Nice and Lille respectively, but despite finishing no lower than 6th in Division 1 for 6 straight seasons, they were surprisingly relegated in 1956, and after failing to bring the club back to the promised land in 1957, Bordeaux parted company with Gérard. 7th, Saint-Étienne with Robert Elbin Saint-Étienne, literally translated as Saint Stephen, were the dominant team in French football throughout the 1960s and 1970s, so it's perhaps fitting that a man who managed during those successful days is their longest serving coach of all time. Robert Alban came in in 1972, replacing Albert Battle, whose style of coaching was deemed too lazy by the Saint-Étienne hierarchy, and Alban won three league titles on the row between 1974 and 1976, as well as three further Coupe de France triumphs, and he reached the European Cup final in 1976, in which they lost 1-0 to the unstoppable force that was Bayern Munich. He would win one more league title with Les Verts in 1981, which is the last in the club's history to date, but amidst the scandal in which it was found out that their owner had put funds into the club which weren't accounted for, the club sank like a stone and were relegated in 1984, with Elba having left the club the year prior. 6. FC Lorient with Christian Gorkouf Remarkably, Christian Gorkouf is not only Lorient's longest serving manager, but also their second longest serving too, with his first spell at the Brittany club coming between 1991 and 2001, and then his second, which is the one that is highlighted here, lasting from 2003 until 2014, and both of those spells are the two longest in Lorient's history. He was the manager who was in charge when Lorient reached Ligue 1 for the first time in their history in 1998, one of six promotions or relegations that he would experience in his first tenure, as well as the boss who made them a solid and steady force in Ligue 1 in his second stint, only once dropping below 14th between 2007 and 2014, albeit it was a 17th place finish in 2011-12, which narrowly saw them escape relegation by one point ahead of Stade Malheur de Caen. However, in the intermittent years of his two spells with the club, they won their only major honour to date, the 2002 Coupe de France, so Gorkouf, who is the father of former Bordeaux and Lyon midfielder Johan Gorkouf, can't even be described as Lorient's greatest ever manager in terms of major trophies won, which must be a bitter pill to swallow. Fifth, FC Metz with Joël Muller. A man who came through the FC Metz Youth Academy, Joël Muller returned to the club as manager in December 1989, 11 years after departing the club for Lyon while still an active player. In his first four full seasons, they finished in 12th every single time, but they would slowly climb the table over the coming years, spurred on by starmen such as Robert Pérez and Rigobert Song, and they would come in second in 1998, their highest league position of all time, although they only lost the league title to Lens by virtue of an inferior goal difference. However, a decline would set in, and by 2000, the club were in relegation trouble, which ultimately cost Muller his job in December of that year. Although admittedly, I don't know the exact date on which he started managing Mets, so the stat is roughly 4,045 days in charge, potentially as low as 4,038, although it wouldn't alter his position in this video in any case. Fourth, Lille OSC with André Chauva. André Chauva spent time with both Olympique Lillois and SC Fives as a player, the two clubs who, in 1944, would come together to create Lille OSC, and two years after that merger, they would win Division 1 and the Coupe de France for the first time as a new entity under the management of Englishman George Berry. Chauva would join that summer, and he would continue on from where his predecessor left off, finishing in second place in the league for four seasons in a row before finally lifting the title in 1954, and winning four Coupe de France titles along the way to boot. 
From 1955 though, the club started to suffer from financial problems and just two years after winning the league, they were relegated to Division 2, where their debts continued to skyrocket despite an immediate return to Division 1. In 1959, when the club was on its way to yet another relegation, Shova departed, although I'm unsure as to whether it was a resignation, a sacking or a mutually agreed departure, or some weird combination of the three. Third, Stade de Reims with Albert Bateau. If I were to tell you that Stade de Reims were one of the most influential teams in French football history, I presume the response would be something of amusement, given how unspectacular the latest few decades have been for the club. However, in the 1940s and 1950s, it was Reims who was supplying the vast majority of players for the French national team, with eight of Reims' academy products, including Jules Fontaine and Raymond Coppa, starring for France in their run to the World Cup semi-finals in 1958. It was during this era that Albert Bateau was in charge of Reims as well as France's national squad, and whilst that might reek of nepotism from an outsider, it makes more sense when you find out that he won five league titles with Reims as well as reaching two European Cup finals in 1956 and 1959, although they lost both of them to the almighty Real Madrid. Bateau's final season in 1963 saw them finish in second, but immediately after that, deprived of many of their star players and guiding lights in Bateau, they shocked the French football world by dropping all the way down to 17th and getting relegated, proving how influential Bateau was to the team. Second, Stade Pressoir 29 with Sarkis Garabedian. There are actually two famous Sarkis Garabedians, one of them being an investment banker and the other Stade Pressoir 29's longest serving head coach. So don't confuse the two. The latter version of Sarkis Garabedian, more commonly referred to as Gara, took joint charge of Stade Prestoire with Armand Foulien, presumably as his assistant, although the only noteworthy thing about his tenure there was its length of 13 years, as they were promoted just once in that time, which was in 1966 from the third to the second tier, and for the next 10 years of Gara's time there, they stayed in Division 2, unable to make that next step. First, FC Nantes with José Arribas. José Arribas was spotted employing the famous Brazilian formation of 4-2-4 at a village side by the name of Noyan sur Sat, and he was appointed as Nantes manager in 1960, setting in motion the jeu à la Nantes, which revolved around speed, technique and movement. It worked a treat, as he got Nantes promoted to Ligue 1 for the first time in their history in 1963, and within two years he'd won the league, adding a further two to his cabinet over the coming eight years. However, his relations with the fans and the board broke down over the final few years of his tenure, and he eventually decided to jump ship to join Marseille in 1976, but it didn't really work out that well, as Nantes promptly won Ligue 1 in the season after he departed. Nevertheless, his 16 years in charge of Nantes, whilst not the longest in France, that honour goes to Guy Roux's 44 years at Auxerre, are the most of any team which will compete in the 2021-22 Ligue 1 season, which Nantes will participate in after winning the relegation playoff against Toulouse on away goals. And that just about wraps up today's video looking at every single Ligue 1 club's longest serving manager ranked from the shortest serving to the longest serving. If you did enjoy it of course please don't forget to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. You can also ring the little notification bell to get notified whenever I upload a video straight away, should that be of your interest, which it probably should be. But thank you very much for watching this video and until next time, I'll see you then.